Okay guys, we are back at the garage and we're going to do some work on the Mach 1 today. Uh, Mach 1 is going under the knife, or why should I say under the drill today, so uh, hang on. We're going to do something uh, that I've been wanting to do. A uh, little bit hesitant because uh, we're marrying two parts that were never meant to be together. So, sounds like uh, some of our families, huh? Anyway, hang on a sec and we'll see what we're going to do. Okay guys, we are in the garage today. We're going to attempt to install the gurney flap onto the non-Ford product GT500 style spoiler. Uh, I watched a couple of guys on the internet, on YouTube, uh, install the gurney flap and some of them use just regular screws to hold this on, but I'm not comfortable with that. So what we did I bought a new tool. All you guys who love buying new tools, uh, I guess I'm one of those guys too. So I went and I looked at all the different ways we could attach the gurney flap. I didn't want to use just screws because I want to be able to take mine on and off. Uh, if you read the gurney flap, when you open it up, it says uh, track use only, remove after, you know, I guess you go to the track. Uh, is that overkill? Yeah, I'm probably going to leave mine on, but I want the ability to be able to take mine on and off. If we just run screws into that plastic, although it is pretty thick, it will probably be okay, but I want to be able to take mine on and off. So what we did, we bought a new tool, and I've already put a hole into the spoiler, and what we're going to be using is what we call a uh, rib nut tool. Went to um, Amazon and bought me a nice rib nut tool and what we're going to do now is to install the first rib nut into that rear spoiler. And I know I laid down my rib nut tool in a very good place where I could find it but at this moment uh, let me go find it. For some of you all who may be unfamiliar this is a rib nut tool. And what this basically does, it inserts uh, this fitting into whatever you want to use, anything that's blind or hollow. Uh, and what it will do, you screw this up on here. This is six millimeter, which is the same uh, threads as the uh, screws that they sent uh, with the um, spoiler, with the um, gurney flap. And what we're going to do is insert this into the hole that I've drilled, pop it in, it'll lock it down, we'll be able to screw it in and out. Uh, let's hope this works. Well, the trick is really holding this hood in a position where I'll be able to control it, so I may have to just do it like this. Hold it straight down and push it in. You gotta push it in, make it firm. Pull up on these handles. And then pull the handle down, unscrew the tool out, and you should have a nice little threaded insert into the back of the spoiler. So far, it looks like it's a success. Let me get the camera and show you guys exactly what that looks like. Okay. Here is the installed rib nut. Hope you guys can see that okay. Hope the lighting is good enough. But that's what the rib nut looks like. Now I have a threaded piece installed in the back of the spoiler. So if I get these lined it up perfectly, I should be able to take my spoiler on and off. So what we're going to do is install that one, position the gurney flap, and then what we will do after we have that positioned in the right place, Put that one bolt in to kind of hold it in place because I'm operating by myself as usual and we'll see if we can't uh, get that one 
the first screw in, kind of hold it, mark it for the second middle screw, and then we'll do the last, the outside screws last. Now, when you buy the gurney flap, I was able to get the gurney flap from Varsity Ford. Okay, we were able to get a T20 Torx bit uh, on that uh, nut, uh, nut, on that screw and get it started in there. So I was able to uh, mark the second hole with the hole punch, got it dead center. So now we're going to drill a pilot hole and then we're going to um, go to the, um, the full size uh, drill bit so that we can make the hole the size that it needs to be for the Rib nut, new tool, the rib nut tool. These things are amazing. I don't know why I've never heard of a rib nut tool until I looked up um, how do you um, put a threaded insert into soft plastic. And thank God for the internet, the rib nut tool showed up. I had thought about doing jack jack nuts, what they call jack nuts, but they were, um, I wasn't impressed with the jack nut and way it, it, once you put it in there, it's not really like I wanted it to be. So this is the, if you're drilling these things, just know it's going to go into this plastic really easy. You don't want to go too far and go all the way through the spoiler. Just want to hit it enough so it appears the surface. So now we got a nice little pilot hole. Switch up to the next size bit, and this for these rib nuts, we are actually using a um, 3 8 drill bit. So far, I'm impressed with this whole operation. Every now and then, I get something right. Thank God, every now and then, I had the camera on to catch one get something right it'll far outweigh all those times that I actually get something wrong <laughs> all right second hole and you saw that that basically the drill just pulled itself down into it it's soft plastic does not take a lot of pressure you just want to just ease it in there made a nice clean hole now we're going to get our rib nut tool These are M6 rib nuts. The tool actually came with uh, M6, M8, and I think 10s. And I had one that I used to um, practice. It also comes with the uh, uh, standard SAE sizes, uh, quarter, 20, and some of the other sizes. But it came with enough rib nuts so I should be able to do this job. I believe it came with um, 10 of these for the M6. So let's get this next one installed. Firm pressure, not a lot of pressure, just enough. Squeeze it up, keep it straight. And just squeeze it gently till it's fully compressed. Open it back up. And then this little knob on top of the tool unscrews the tool out of the rib nut. So then you have a nice threaded insert in the back of the spoiler. And the worst case scenario, we would have had to get a little bit longer. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. It actually uh, sunk it in just a little bit. And that, that's, that's a good thing. So you know it's tight. It's not going anywhere. Last thing you want to do is have your gurney flap installed. And then you're going down the highway. And what do they say? The, the gurney flap and the um, front splitter um, provide another 150 pounds of downforce. And that wing blow off the back. Then you're all bent out of shape. So you got a cheap spoiler and your gurney flap is blowing down the highway. <laughs> so let's 
get this done. Okay, we have the two center rib nuts in. We have the two center uh, screws into the rib nuts screwed in. Uh, not tight, but semi there. Um, now we're going to mark the final two holes on the end with our uh, hole punch. It's very important to get them as, as close to center as you can because otherwise you're going to have a hard time getting all four of these screws centered and into the holes when you if they're any, even off by a little bit because the rib nut is going to be exactly in the middle or wherever you put this hole. Okay. Got that one in the center. And go ahead and mark this other hole while we're at it. Alright, dead center. Alright, now what we're going to do is unbolt the, um, the two center screws, set the last two rib nuts, and then we'll install it one more time for good. Get it cleaned up. Probably stand to have some, uh, a little bit longer T20 screws. Um, I'll look and see after I get it installed to see how many threads are going on to be too tight. So let's get these other two holes installed and I will be right back with you. Okay guys, here is the finished product. I'm going to turn the camera around let you look and tell me what you think and leave your um, comments in the comment section. This is the gurney flap installed. Wiped everything down. Fits right on to the non-Ford GT500 style spoiler and of course those who are not familiar with the gurney flap you're gonna say I didn't see where you added anything but yeah it fits on there it's nice and flush I think it looks just dandy so we're gonna do a couple more things today one of the things I have been looking at I don't know if you guys can see but when I put my X pipe on, I think my, um, you're not going to be able to see this in the dark, I don't believe. But when I put my um, tips on, I think they're just a little bit off. We're going to move those up a little bit, but we'll do that in the sunshine where you can see. Hang on a sec, guys. Okay, guys, we finally finished with the projects for today. We got the gurney flap installed. And something that had been bothering me for a very long time, I got the um, tips, <laughs> my exhaust tips leveled out. Now it was just off a little bit, but every time I went back in, I would take a look and I'm like, are those tips level? So now I got under there and I'm going to turn the camera around and you tell me what you think. I think they're level now. And if I'm satisfied, then you guys should be satisfied for me. All right. Let's turn it around and let you see. What do you think? Are the tips level or are they not? Somebody could say, well, if you're that crazy about it, then why don't you take a ruler and a level and put on there and make sure that, well, we're not doing that. It's as good as it's going to get. And you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. So. That's it. Okay guys, so we got the gurney flap installed. We got the tips lined up and we are about ready to carry this baby to the track. 
Uh, so stay tuned. Remember to like and subscribe. We got a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to get out to some of the cars and coffee. Uh, also, uh, this coming Saturday, June the 5th, we will be at uh, Dominion Raceway. I may have a little issue there. I'm not sure, um, but uh, we'll see uh, how that goes. Right now, we're planning to be there. Uh, the car is ready to go. The gurney flap's going to be providing plenty of downforce for us to go around the track. Of course, we're not going to be going that fast. And here's the thing about the gurney flap as well as the handling pack. And those, those of you who have the handling pack, please don't think that I'm hating on the handling pack because I'm really not. But for the average person who buys a Mach 1, you mean the guy who's never going to take it to the track? the guy who's never going to use 150 pounds of downforce from the gurney flap and the front splitter. Yeah. Somebody said, well, why don't you get, well, truth be known, I'm going to be doing 90%, let's say 98% of the driving on the street where the gurney flap and the front splitter will never come into play. Uh, I know some folks who got the splitter and have rubbed it the wrong way, so to speak, on uh, low um, um, exits on driveways and things like that. So, uh, no, I'm not hating on that. Anybody who got the handling plat, hallelujah to you. But uh, for me, uh, gurney flap is all I'm putting on here for now. Uh, and I can, now that I know how to use a um, rib nut tool, can take mine off and put it back on. So... See you all on the next video. See you.